Rockets are huge. And I mean huge. For example, the SLS, the rocket that's taking us back to the moon, is 322 feet tall. And more than that, this is what I look like next to the launch pad. And to show you just how massive these rockets truly are, I'm gonna be using VR to show everyday comparisons to these massive structures, just so it's a little bit easier to grasp. So be sure to watch until the end because some of these rockets are unfathomably large and you won't want to miss it. But we're gonna start off with one of the largest rockets that never really went to space. The Soviet N-1 rocket. It was supposed to be powered by this engine, the NK-33, but more specifically, 30 of these engines. But saying it never flew to space is a little misleading, as it did fly, just never successfully. But here's what the flight might have looked like if it did. And with this being me just next to one of the fins on the rocket, it becomes a little bit easier to understand how large this thing really is. Now, you can see this thing is massive, but it doesn't even compare to the beast flying today. The N1 stood around 345 feet tall. Around the same time, the United States had built the Saturn V, the rocket that originally took us to the moon. Now, obviously this isn't to scale. The five massive engines at the bottom power what's called the first stage. And once it runs out of fuel, it detaches from the rest of the rocket and lets the second stage continue on, and so on, and so on. This is because rockets are actually mostly fuel, which essentially means that all of this space is used for fuel, while this is all that's left for cargo and people. Which I guess it goes without saying, but getting to the moon takes a lot of energy. But why? Well, let's watch the actual Saturn V all the way over there, launch and show us how. Three, two, one, zero, all engine running. Notice how the rocket isn't going straight up. As it gets higher, it starts to turn a little to the side so that it can constantly fall around the Earth at the same rate that's being pulled in by gravity. And this is what creates an orbit. But these rockets are all fairly old and haven't really flown in over half a century. So let's look at some of the newer rockets. Like the SpaceX Falcon 9, the most flown rocket to date. This is also the only current orbital rocket that can land itself and be reused. And they do this by landing it on a barge in the middle of the ocean. The barge is essentially a giant boat that's about the size of a football field. I mean, this is just the first stage. This is what the whole rocket looks like. And as I start to walk beside it, you kind of get a bit of scale of how large these things really are. And at the time of recording this video, they have successfully landed one booster 21 times. SpaceX says that the Falcon 9 will eventually be able to be 90% of all rockets launched. But as far as just raw numbers and size goes, I mean, look at me compared to the landing legs. And just for a sense of scale, this is me next to the bottom of it. This rocket is absolutely huge. The crazy thing is, SpaceX has already built the world's largest and most powerful rocket ever. And at the time of this video, they've already flown three times already, even though SpaceX has tweeted that they're going to fly again in two weeks. And the crazy thing is, this is the engine that powers it. And similar to the N1, it's not just one that powers it, but 33. Altogether, this rocket is an absolute beast, and moreover, it's going to be 100% reusable. And it's also predicted to become one of the cheapest rockets to fly, which is just insane to think about. And unlike the Falcon 9, Starship won't be landing on the ground or even in the ocean. So how are they going to recover? It. Well, let's watch the launch and see for ourselves.
That's right, using two giant arms, they're gonna catch it out of the sky. Now, while this does seem absolutely insane, they are making really good progress. Right now, we're experiencing another huge wave in the development of space exploration. And this is the path I actually wanna pursue with my life. So I hope this video helped you, and if you've made it this far, consider liking and subscribing, and of course, if you have any questions at all, be sure to leave them in the comments. And most importantly, I hope this all made you a little bit more excited about the future of humanity. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you all in the next one.